evening. I'd like to call the Tuesday, November, uh, February 21st, 2023, uh, Berlin Select Board meeting to order. With us tonight is Joe Stop to my far left and Dave Sawyer to my far right. I'm Brad Town. Uh, Flo Smith will be joining us shortly. Um, with us also is Vince Conti, town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Uh, the additions or ch uh, changes to the agenda? Uh, no, no additions. Additions. I just want to mention that there will be executive sessions tonight for contract purposes. <coughs> okay. Um, public comment. Hearing none. Uh, special events applications approvals. There's two applications in your folders for the CV Runners Club in Montpelier for two different events uh, down there. Uh, they have submitted their um, their applications and their certificate of insurance as well. Again, these are events that are yearly events that happen down there. They do have uh, volunteers that are going to be positioned throughout the course. Um, I didn't see the signage, but I'd be happy to get back to them, Joe, from your email to make sure there is signage. Again, typically. The past couple of years, they have, they've had their signage okay. as well. They, they just didn't they, mention they, they didn't put it in the application, yeah. You're correct. Okay. The chief had no qualms about this? Uh, no, yeah, I got no feedback from the chief um, on, and from Joe on the, on the fire department regarding signage was the only other feedback that I had. Okay. Um, Make a motion to approve uh, the Central Vermont Runners applications for the uh, road races. Here a second. I'll second. We're, only, we're gonna do them one at a time. It's two different groups, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, all those in favor of the of the uh, social Mount road runners. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I'll make a motion on the uh, capital city stampede 10k road race. Be on That's also CB runners. It is a CB. Okay. The CB runners. Central Mount runners. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. Motion carries. Um, Brian Lafayette. I, I reached out to him to remind him of uh, that he had asked to be on here to, to speak regarding uh, the hilltop. Uh, I did not hear back from him. Um, so I'm going to assume that he's he's not going to uh, come in tonight. He's not online either. So. Okay. Uh, Fisher Road Diet presentation. Yeah, we have Mr. Sergeant here to uh, present. Sure, you know, I will. Be sure to I will. Let me say I will attempt to do that. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks everybody for having me. Uh, so I've got a presentation that the you know you folks have a paper version, and I'll. Uh, have this online in a second. Um, I know everyone's busy, so I'm gonna go through the uh, presentation itself relatively quickly and try to leave time to talk and ask questions. You should you should be able to now, Chris. I hope it says host disabled participant screen share. Really? Yeah. Share screen. Let me try this. How about now? Yes, I can, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, so again, I'm Chris Sargent. Uh, I'm uh, the project manager for this, um, this the Berlin uh, Fisher Road scoping study. Um, and, you know, I, I run the planning team at DSK, so we've had a number of planners and a few engineers working on this project. Uh, I'm a planner myself, so if we get into deep technical questions, I may have to uh, hold my answer until I can get some technical expertise. But um, I'm just going to roll through this really quick. So. The first thing I want to do is just kind of remind everybody what a scoping study is and sort of where, where it falls. Because uh, people often see this type of stuff and think, oh my God, it's going to get built tomorrow. But that's not where this is at. This is a scoping study. Uh, the purpose of the scoping study is really to, you know, take an idea and go, okay, is this idea even feasible? Um, and how might we do it? What are the different ways in which we, we might do it? And that's where we're, what we're talking about tonight is to sort of um, 
there's four approaches. One of them is doing nothing, but the, there's three approaches that are we've we've sort of been batting around and have um, sketched out, you know, conceptual designs for uh, for us to talk about. Um, in this case, but you know, when you have a project like this, you then move into if the town cho chose to do anything with the the material that comes out of the sto scoping study, you would then move forward with you know design and engineering and then eventually into the built and you know building it but that there's a whole lot of process to get from where we are right now to there uh, and a lot of opportunities for you folks to think about it and make decisions and for the community to have input so where this fits sort of in the context of berlin is you guys did this new town center application and a lot of stuff came out of that and we started this scoping study. Again, we're gonna then think about possible future redevelopment. And why? Because the vision of the new town center involves a lot of new development that's gonna add a lot of extra traffic and extra pressure uh, to the road itself. Plus, um, there's a real desire for having, you know, pedestrian facilities that are adequate for uh, even the people who are here now, but also that larger population of folks. Um, and same for bicycles. So what we're looking at really is, is again, it's Fisher Road. We're uh, from Payne Turnpike to the intersection of Route 62. The focus of our project really is at the Mall Road intersection. Um, we do not get into uh, any redesign suggestions for Route 62, and largely because it's a you know limited access highway and that's a really complicated thing. Um, we certainly considered it and it was part of our modeling process when we were doing our traffic modeling. Um, but we didn't get dig too deep into that end of things. Um, you know, looking at Fisher Road today, some concerns you guys have um, some some significant users already. You know, CBMC, the mall, um, crossing uh, at Route 62 isn't very safe. There's limited crossings on uh, Fisher Road, and there's not particularly good pedestrian infrastructure in this area. Um, and the truth is, is that in particularly once you get uh, next to CBMC and you're you know from um, the mall intersection to Route 62, the pavement's pretty wide there, um, and probably wider than it needs to be uh, in order to accommodate the traffic that goes through there. Um, we looked at this sort of holistically by thinking about traffic volumes, um, people walking and biking, making sure it's accessible at all times and the idea of sense of place. And one of the things that came out of the, of the Newtown Center is really this desire to sort of look at Fisher Road as the, the gateway. So we took all of those things in mind as we were um, beginning to think about the concepts. Things that we considered, uh, like I said, bike pet improvements, um, possible green space expansion, just to kind of enhance the aesthetics, uh, intersection design, obviously, and traffic modeling were big components of the work that we've done to date. And the traffic modeling is key because we really need to consider uh, the change in traffic volumes. And we, we set sort of the 2025 as the, the sort of present year for our model and then looked at 2045 as the, as the build out. And based on that, what we know about the new town center, at, at maximum build out, we're talking more than 300 residential units, 5,200 square feet of new commercial services, um, the desire to have improved walkability and some additional internal designs for walkability within the Newtown Center. And what this really amounts to is about 17% growth in vehicle trips in the area. So that's pretty significant. Um, one thing I will notice is that our modeling does consider CBMC's growth. One of the lucky things about us getting hired is we had, been, we had done a, a fair bit of work with CBMC on their design. So we had done some traffic modeling for them with sort of understanding what they were seeing for growth. So, uh, and when we met with them last fall, I think it was last fall, you know, we, they asked us about that and we talked to them about what we had for data and they're like, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty, still pretty accurate. So that was good. Um, I'm not gonna get into the super details of this slide. Um, I can, uh, I'm actually open this right now, if I can. Um, give me a second, for those of you online, I should be able to, really quickly, if it's enabled, drop this into the chat. It might not be there. It's all right. It's all right. Or it might not be there. So we're not going to worry about it. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. All 
All right, so I just dropped the um, this PowerPoint into the uh, into the chat, so anyone can download it if they want to, and um, Tom will have it up online uh, tomorrow. So, it, you know, but the, the the primary thing I want to hit on with regards to the method methodology is, um, you know, that we used one of the things we did is use data that was pre-COVID, because you know all of the traffic data dropped during the COVID era, era obviously. So we used pre-COVID data and we, um, you know, when these models are being done by our engineering staff, they apply factors that sort of assume that just naturally the amount of traffic is gonna grow just based on the things that go on. And those were also uh, sort of um, modified in to consider the impacts of COVID as well. So the design concept, like I said, there were four of them. One of them is the no build design. It's pretty simple. You just opt to do, choose to do nothing. Um, and that's, considering that is re actually required as part of any of these uh, projects that have federal pass through to the state. Um, then we considered this idea of paint, paint only. Okay, what if we sort of reconfigure things kind of like they did on the very Montpelier Road where the lanes get changed, paint goes on, and uh, that is a tool that's used to help change the traffic patterns. We looked at just reducing the number of lanes physically, so that means the physical improvements, including curbing and things of that nature. Um, and then finally a roundabout and a pathway. And one thing I'll note is, is that while we tied like the lane reduction and sidewalks to one specific thing, you could have the roundabout and sidewalks, or you could have paint only and a pathway. So the, the, there are pieces that can be mixed, sort of mixed and matched in this if you so chose. Obviously, it would change the dollar amounts for some of these things. If you, know, if you added a pathway, that would be a, an investment um, <clears throat> to the paint only. Um, so, get in here and we will. So, obviously, no build. That's, there's nothing to talk about there. That's uh, things stay as they are. Um, you, over time, Traffic would get significantly worse if you left it as it is, um, for sure, you know, by 2035 anyway. So there's this idea of a paint only road diet and what's proposed here is bike lanes, um, you know, no green space additions, no new sidewalk, uh, maybe something like a painted median next to the hospital, although there's, you know, that would still be something that's flexible. Um, and that would sort of be a tool that would reduce uh, it would reduce the number of lanes slightly, but um, and provide better bicycle infrastructure just because there would be de dedicated bike lanes. Um, potential cost for that is somewhere between five hundred twenty-five thousand and seven hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. And it's important to note that a lot of this, these types of projects, would be funded in significant part by seeking grant funds from the state. You know, there would be a twenty percent match. I think is typical. Um, so. That's what the town would bear, but um, that's that. Um, and this, so, and this, this, this change in traffic uh, in lane configuration applies to both uh, this paint only, but also the lane reduction. And really, the only thing that's changing is is that um, if you look at that slide that says current and proposed, the yellow line is we're combining a right turn and a through lane, which is currently now separate the way it's designed. And that gives us some additional asphalt, basically, to kind of neck things down a little bit. Um, uh, and this, in this instance, in this, this information, I should have updated this, but I, I, I didn't. So this focuses specifically on the intersection at um, uh, the mall, uh, so the uh, the you know, Road Mall intersection. Um, the this really isn't going to change significantly. The road diet will make like minor improvements at 2045. What you want to see for the level of service, which is basically sort of a level of service is sort of an all around. If it's an A, it's really fantastic. If it's an E, it's awful. Um, and you know, right now, if we left things as they were at night, it would be pretty brutal. I think you'd have a lot of traffic. It would be uh, it would be tough, um, but it would improve slightly. Um, intersection delays would be better at certain times, but worse at other times. Um, and we thought a bit, one of the things we thought about too was 
kind of queuing lengths, um, how, how long are the cars going to be waiting, and so how are they going to stack up? And we thought about that at, at um, Route 62 intersection as well. For the lane reduction in sidewalks, um, this is more physical uh, than just paint. You know, this would be you'd maintain existing crosswalks, but add free pedestrian crossings uh, would be added at the four-way stop uh, for Berlin Mall and Hospital Loop Road. Um, you know, this an additional sidewalks would be added um, on the uh, would be the south-ish side of the road, um, and then other connections would be made on the north side of the road as well, uh, just to kind of complete the network. So it was, it was full, and the sidewalk would theoretically go uh, to the point where we meet up with the shared use path that's being proposed at this point, uh, that's connected with the mall. Um, and you know, in addition, we'd be looking at uh, you know possibly planted median um, and some buffered bike lanes still. The potential cost for this is 1.3 million to 1.5 million. If you said, you know, uh, we, we talked about this in our last meeting, is, is the idea of, well, what if we wanted to do the shared use path versus um, doing a, uh, a sidewalk in this one? And that would add about $450,000 to this total price uh, for either of this. Because it's a you know, uh, shared use path is 12 feet versus 5 feet, so it's that additional material would effectively cost about that much extra. Um, and uh, let's see what else we're looking at. So, and this again, it, it, it improves things a little, but not significantly in terms of sort of the traffic analysis end of, of, uh, of the process. You know, things get a little better, but not infinitely better. And then the final one is the, the big one here. This is the roundabout. Um, <clears throat> and with this particular example, we included the shared use path. Again, the shared use path could really be a piece of any of them. Um, it will just change the price. Uh, again, sidewalks could be. We did get a lot of feedback from the public that they were really interested in the idea of a shared use path. So I think that that's got a lot of um, a lot of public support for that. This still is, this also proposes potentially doing some street trees and traffic calming. Um, the roundabout itself is going to allow traffic to pass through a, a good clip, but also provide really good opportunities for pedestrians to cross. And it, um, a, you know, from a pedestrian standpoint, it would be a lot safer, I think, uh, or feel a lot safer. Again, this one proposes a 12 foot wide shared use path that basically runs, uh, links the Newtown Center to Fisher Road. Uh, and we, you know, are proposing that it go all the way down to uh, Payne Turnpike. And we'd still be doing some, suggesting some sidewalk extensions uh, to sort of allow, you know, uh, CBMC, to their property to better connect to this whole network. Um, and this is about 2.5 million or 3.5 million, somewhere between there. Uh, depends on you know, the, getting into the details. And with this one, uh, the traffic piece of it, this is where, you know, the roundabout makes traffic better. That's just, in this case, it will. Modeling shows that you go from uh, sort of average. I mean, C and D isn't horrible, and we're not in Boston, so it's nothing. You know. I mean, I suppose for for many of us, probably D would be annoying because we're not from Boston. But uh, if we were from a metropolitan area, we'd be probably happy with D. Um, but everything goes up to A. Um, intersection delays are significantly reduced, obviously, um, and queuing is also reduced because of the, just the ability to move through the roundabout so, so smoothly. So the final thing I want to talk about is this alternative comparison. I'm going to put my switch my uh, deck over here so that you guys can see this. It's easier to look at format. Um, so we always run through these processes and we do a, a matrix to sort of kind of compare different. Um, okay, we got all these different ideas. Let's score it and see how things come out when you you know when you sort of break things down. And we we look at bicycle pedestrian safety, traffic calming and combine those numbers to create a safety score. We looked at impacts to properties, so how much land is gonna to need to be used in order to, um, to facilitate these, and obviously like the not doing anything, it, it, it has no impact, so we've got a three, 
roundabout definitely eats some land on the edges of the, the corners of that intersection, and so that got to work. Um, we considered conceptual cost and utility impacts as well for the implementation score, and um, then there's also the traffic count. Got, the traffic uh, modeling was considered and public support. And we did have a survey that was out for, we had it open for about a month and got really good feedback. It was over 200, I think, which is really, really good. And you know, I mean, uh, I just had one for another time that had 17 people respond. So you guys did great. Tom, um, to his credit, uh, we weren't getting a lot of feedback, as much feedback as he wanted. And we he pushed it out with the radio, I believe, right? Radio North. Group. Yeah, and that, that made a big difference. It really, really loved it. So, you know, ultimately the, the the sort of clear quote unquote winner in this case is the roundabout pathway because it hits all the, you know, sort of, it hits all the notes um, in comparison. Obviously that's the most expensive one, so that's you know, a big, big thing to think about and how, how that would ultimately be implemented. Um, and whether, you know, there's any opportunities to partner with some of the, the significant property owners on some of the, co to bear some of the cost, I don't know, and I don't know whether that's a conversation worth having, but um, I know that some communities can work things like that out as well. Um, so that's, uh, I wanted to roll through that quickly so that there's opportunity for questions. So what do you folks have for, for questions, anything? On the, on the Route 62 in the route uh, in Payne Turnpike, what's the stacking in there now? In terms of the amount of, of things, I can't, unfortunately, I can't answer that off the top of my head. Yeah, busy, busy yeah. time. Yeah, and, but one of the things that we really focused on with the modeling was we were concerned about, particularly the roundabout, because, okay, everybody's going through really fast. That's great. But if they start lining it up at yeah. the end of there and line up all the way back into the roundabout, that's a problem. And ultimately, it was when we modeled that, it was okay. Um, you know, I think the vehicle queuing was not bad. And I have to look, that the queuing that's there includes... Um, yeah, the data for there includes the um, Route 62, and it looks like it's slightly less, you know, at sort of if it got built, assuming the, the assuming the roundabout was built at 2025, you'd actually get some good gains and you'd be a few less queuing. So right now, it looks like existing conditions, maximum queue lengths of cars at Route 62 was about 14 cars, um, which kind of stands to reason the hospital <laughs> gets out of, out of work and everybody's leaving. Um, and so you, you might have 13 with a roundabout, so it actually would go down a little bit less, but um, by 2045, it looks like it would be, it looks like it would remain about 13. So it doesn't look like it's gonna get any worse. Uh, and, and I think one thing that should, will need to be addressed, obviously, is the timing. Um, and, we, and we did find that just by adjusting the timing of the, the mall intersection right now, if that got done, it would that would improve today at least a little bit. It wouldn't be like you know, it's not going to be the same effect as the roundabout, but it would definitely improve things a little bit. So there's opportunities, I think, on both intersections to maybe have the agency at least rethink their timing on that end, and then do something about the timing on your end and uh, you know, make some improvements. Now. That answer your question. Yeah. Uh, now, what, what about truck stacking in there too? You know, I don't know how much we specifically looked at truck stacking, so that's a good question. I don't, I don't think that was, I'm not sure that was specifically looked at in the model. Yeah. Um, do you find that you're getting a, an excess of truck traffic there, or is it, I mean, because that, that's definitely something to consider. Well, I'm looking, if you if you look at this going forward, you know, if, if the mall does develop out, is there going to be more truck traffic on Fisher, or is it just going to stay on 62? Right in the entrance most yeah. of the development is residential in the new town center so yeah. you wouldn't expect a lot of truck traffic mm -hmm. outside of ups that you know small yeah. truck traffic. Yeah. 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 can you tell us more about the survey responses and the breakdown and what that looked like you know, um, I should have in that general i'm not sure i have yeah, I might have to have a, a Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a good point. In there? Oh, you got it in there? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I think Thank you're you going to see slightly more truck traffic on the 62 and the, that end than you do now if, if you know, Hobby Lobby and all that mm -hmm. goes through. And then with the reconfiguration of Subaru and Toyota over there, 
I, I'm not sure how much those guys don't come in from the upper end and down there, you know, off Fisher Road. You mean the, uh, for the, the tr car delivery and stuff? Yeah. I think I've seen them coming in the upper part more than I have the lower part. Well, I think that's a lot of, a lot of that is because of your uh, GPS. That's the way it's sent them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The quickest. Just download it and I'll share it. So Thank you. you. Here, see you. I'm glad you asked. Excellent presentation of the materials. Very detailed. Give my little internet connection here a second, and we can talk about a bit of that. And um, yeah. okay, I'm gonna... that is definitely a really good response. Yeah, it's it's. I was I was frankly stunned. I mean, I've been in. I've, this is my twenty first year as a planner, and I mean, twenty five percent return rate is pretty good, and that's got to be what is that? This was. I don't know what that total population is. It's more than 25, I'm sure. Well, yeah. we threw a wider net than just town. Of yeah, but it was that was that was a really it was a great call, and, and I felt like we got a good um, Fisher Road users. Yeah, right. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully people can see my screen. Um, right over here a little bit. Um, so like I said, okay, so it was 144 people. Sorry, I misspoke, but that's still really good. Um, majority, 65% uh, supported the roundabout and shared use path al alternative, 15% favored no action, action um, largely because of cost, fair. Um, you know, of the concerns noted, uh, most of the cost, most of the comments were about either related to cost or safety. Um, yep, so th those who selected the no action alternative just weren't really into spending money and didn't think it needed to be upgraded. Um, there were a few people who favored, preferred the um, the paint only alternative because it was simple, it was easy, you know. Um, I will say that, so as a planner, I'm, I'm not often, I, you know, I don't get into the detailed cost estimates that was an engineering staff. I was actually kind of surprised at how expensive the paint only alternative was. So I was like, I, I kind of thought, oh, I'll just slap some paint on. But of course, you know, there's, there's always more to it than that. The uh, sidewalk and four-way intersection, um, some people really felt like it was simpler to use. I mean, you know, there are a lot of people who are pretty uncomfortable with roundabouts, I understand so there's some roundabouts that they don't like either, so. Um, and they like the idea of the dedicated bike lanes and sidewalks. Um, but the roundabout was definitely the one that was most uh, recognized as popular. So, um, it's a little fuzzy here, but uh, yeah, this shows the green on this, Kind of fuzzy uh, pie chart is the that's that's the support for the sixty five percent support for the shared use path. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Um, not much else there, but uh, you know, sort of the best comments that we saw there. Um, you know, someone said they live on three hundred two and doesn't feel like there's much to do in Berlin with my son. We have to go to Barrier Montpelier. I really enjoy the possibilities the new town center brings to have local community events. Uh, the Fisher Road alternatives allow these new places and events to be more accessible to us on foot or bike. Um, someone also said, one, prioritize bicycle and pedestrian circulation, two, tra traffic calming, three, a road diet, more vegetation, four, safety concerns addressed. So they were really, uh, that was sort of why they liked the roundabout. Um, and some folks, one folks, person said, open space and less confusion about lane choice and road versus pedestrian space. So that's, that's our, that's the summary. Thank you very much yeah, for taking the time to share that. Absolutely, I'm really glad. Thank you, Google Box, for making it. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, I did have one. Sure. Uh, my question was just with all the ambulances coming in and out mm -hmm. all the time, how does that affect, like, on the roundabout? So, I mean, the ambulances have their, they have that side entrance, too, they can go in. But actually, I think it would be faster with the roundabout. It's going to be easier for them to navigate. Because uh, there's no stopping at that, typically. I mean, there's some slow, might be slowing down, but if they come in, I think that'll enable them to go pretty quickly. Yeah. So, I have a question on the ambulance. Um, yeah. So, CMC had a plan at one time of moving their emergency entrance. Yeah, to their, yeah. So, and I think that that would, the roundabout would jive with that idea. I don't know whether they will. I can, I can tell you that roundabouts are really difficult sometimes to 
maneuver, at least going the proper direction. Right. Yeah. Um, I've been going the wrong way at times. Gotcha. But we can make it. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering with that. If they were to move forward with that design, if that would, if, if it's a, if you have a lot of ground cover, you know your your vegetation or whatnot, if you're really choking it down oh, in yeah. one lane, you know what are those people going to do when the sirens go off? Yeah, they stop. Right, right. So. Yep. Yeah, I mean I think that's something that's just getting beginning to you know learning how you need to operate in there, and the sirens are going to come up behind them. And hopefully they'll move forward. And, and Joe, we sat down specifically with with them prior to any of this coming out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah. They were pretty keen on the roundabout, uh, uh, just because to get their employees in and out. Yeah. They, they see that as really beneficial to their campus. Uh, uh, if you notice the roundabout, if, assuming the. The, the mall is is west. You can see the roundabout actually pushes further towards the mall property and off of the CVMC uh, campus property. So yeah. that that allows them to keep some of their internal lanes that they may have now for emergency use, especially if they move the they move the uh, the emergency room to you know to that the new area mm -hmm. uh, and and. Uh, so they, they really like that idea of shifting the roundabout further off of their campus, giving them the ability to do some internal stuff. Okay. Any other questions? Right. Thank you very much, Chris. Oh, thank you. Thanks thank for your time. Chris. Appreciate it. This is the yearly, right? Each year, the uh, tax department requires them to, to file this, uh, saying that they have no appeals or suits pending for the current tax year. Um, that's what this is. The documents in your package, and just we need we'll need that uh, signed this evening, uh, accepting that by the board, please. Uh, local options tax proposal. Local options tax proposal, yes. So we have uh, Raylene here with us tonight. Um, she was involved uh, with um, doing some marketing for Barry this year when theirs uh, passed first time through. Uh, I've asked her to come in and kind of talk a little bit, answer your questions about what was done, uh, what they did. Um, uh, as I briefed you in the, in the last meeting, it's, uh, it's about 700 bucks a quarter to have them do some a similar program for us to promote over the course of the next year, our uh, local options tax uh, proposal. So Raylene, if you'd like to uh, uh, talk to the board and uh, probably answer one or 200 questions. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. So um, I guess I'll, I can start by telling you kind of what was what was done in the city and then we can go with questions that you might have um it was it was broken up into four different pieces so that there was a quarter for each piece and um the main piece the beginning piece number one was the the initial cell the what we're looking for so um in our what are you looking for uh we gave a, a solely for that this is what solely for the tax will be used for so capital equipment streets and sidewalks and then capital infrastructure and improvements that was um the main focus at first we talked about what it was actually going to be used for and then the pitch at the final end of that quarter was so many communities around Barrie were already doing it 
and to get back what you're already giving away when you go to Williston, Essex, Burlington, South Burlington. Uh, and it would be the same case for Berlin. Uh, and the difference is I'm assuming in Berlin, you probably get a lot more non-resident shoppers than we do down in Barrie. Um, I know that I go to Berlin for most of my stuff. Uh, so that could be one of the, the pitches, the initial pitch of, we wanna do this because this is what you'll gain from it. And then uh, the second quarter, you would spend your time uh, going over the revenue options and um, talk about how, w what that's going to do to the property tax and how uh, we could actually mitigate increases in property tax. And what is that, what is that going to do uh, by most of that money coming in from non-shoppers? And then we want to talk about the impacts that it would have on fixed income property owners, which is zero. In the end, it's a, it, there is a zero impact. Uh, and then we get into um, residential versus business property owners, that it's good for both. And proving, proving that it's good for a business is a lot tougher than it is proving that it is good for or just a residential property, of course. And so finding the pitches, um, finding other business owners that have been through this was actually easy to go to other um, communities and talk to those business owners and get them to be involved in our pitch at, in Barry City to say, this is what we did. And yes, we may have been against it at first, but now this is why we're happy that we did it. And many people were gladly willing to jump on. And uh, the third quarter, we held um, at, like town hall type forums, which were both virtual and in person, that people could, could come and voice their opinions, ask their questions, get, get answers directly from the mouths of the people on the council. Um, and, that I, and then we took those questions and answers, and that's what we did for our final quarter. We took all of that information and pushed it out with all of the other plugs that we had been doing throughout the year. So uh, any testimonials, any um, feedback that we got, both negative and positive and how this can be done in a marketing uh, way would be all through uh, digital uh, ads, video ads, testimonials, the, um, the forums that are live, uh, they would be live on Facebook and on YouTube, giving people to a, an opportunity to participate in person or like I am right now. And it what it does being, what helps I believe the most as far as Facebook goes is that people often don't weigh in when you're live, they weigh in later. They don't wanna be the, the one that is speaking out right in front of everybody else. So they'll weigh in later. And then the people in the town can monitor that and answer those questions of the people that didn't necessarily want to speak out during an open forum. And so it allows that option as well. Uh, and then of course we would invite any of you to come down. I know Dave has sat in the studio with us before, so he knows how it goes. Uh, but uh, we would invite any of you down to and do little, little clips or even an entire show where we could come to you and and really promote it to um to the townspeople and i i did mention to vince the other day i have reached out to the central vermont chamber of commerce as well i i did that before i did stuff with the city and i just did that again yesterday with kevin eschelbach 
just to see where they stood because as they've often spoke out against it and they said they've given up on speaking out against it because they found when they did that that so many people were in favor of it that really what the information they was they were passing along was literally just information that it was taken with a grain of salt at this point so that's kind of, that's good news yeah thank you Rayleigh thank you any questions for Raylene at this point again at the end I'm going to be looking for the board's approval to to move forward with this marketing campaign and how often how many yeah. quarters were we going to do this well we're gonna, we got four quarters you're gonna, you're gonna do how, how gonna, many how many segments in a quarter are you Great. so we would do each quarter would have each quarter would be designed with different segments and and it would kind of it would go in the in the order in which you all felt comfortable in proceeding i guess so um the first quarter in the city it was we we first pitched the idea that you know this is what we're thinking of and then the next pitch was take back what you're giving away in other communities around you by getting it from the non-residents and then the end of the first quarter was the huge pitch of what is this solely for what what is this money used for because that the bottom line is that's what everybody wants to know and mostly they want to know that keep being reminded that they're going to be the ones that are gaining that they um less lack likely to have an increase in the property tax or uh, as big of an increase of course it you know won't always be a zero percent but um and then the second quarter was the projected revenues uh what what are the projected revenues and what will those projected revenues um help with and and what could it what could have you avoid by gaining that money uh, we know that the expenses are always going to be there they're not going to go away uh, so this is the perfect way to have a revenue other than property tax and when you say that that's where i think you get more people involved because the word not increasing property tax always is a is a winner <laughs> <laughs> so it is broken up into quarters and how it's done would depend on on all of you and how you thought it should be done do you want to do little um video type commercials do you want to start by doing them with just um ads that i make up and with graphics and in wording that you approve first um and then and then invite people from the community you guys have voted on this before find people who were in favor and and are they still in favor and why were they in favor uh nothing like having your neighbor think it's a great idea and and especially if you're somebody that's new to town um i'm not so sure that that's the case with you got you probably have people that have been there a lot longer than probably doesn't change over as much as here But those are the those are the ideas, and and you just do little bits each time, but with one focus for each quarter. And the third quarter being the where you really focus on having a couple of those town hall type meetings, where you can generate the information and you can generate kind of the feel of of the community before you go into pitching it on your fourth and final quarter before you vote. Chris, do you have a percentage that you thought this thing was voted down last time you for? Yeah, we, we, it was like 30, 32 people that voted differently. Then it would have passed. passed. So I think so it's it was, not like you need a big, big uh, swing. You just gotta get the information out there. It was 70 something votes, right?
And this was going to cost, what was the cost per quarter? 700. 700. Yeah, approximate. It, well, and, and I see 700 a quarter, and, and I was told Vince this too. If I put this much work into um, to helping or to do this for a, a, big, a local business, it would co it would cost them more, but I have to I have to take into account that for me some of this is a public service announcement, which um, most of you know. Some of you may know we do, we do those for free, so I have to take an account for that factor and and kind of take in, take that away from from the package and say that that part it's kind of like our duty to help out a little bit yeah so do you, do you see this as being um maybe one or two sit downs uh at segments and then couple that with the public service announcements to really keep it in the residents eyes i guess yeah i mean i if you if you do this it would be my plan that literally five days a week, every week for the next year, the, the people in your community see at least one, if not two ads a day on top of anything that we do videos or shows or um, that, the, you know, and we, right now our viewership is like 50,000 a month, right around there. And we have a really good percentage in Berlin. Um, the majority of our listeners, of course, are Barry. Uh, but then we have a, um, I think the last time I looked and I can look again, 38% of our um, listeners were in Berlin. So that you're our next um, town besides Barry that, that tunes in. And so that is, you know, that's a, good plus two but we would make sure that literally at least five days a week um every week for the next year that it's on there a couple times a day yeah i make the motion to move forward with the local options tax marketing and pr proposal um through aired out and as presented to us this evening by Raylene Minier. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I'll Thank be in you, touch, Raylene. Raylene. Thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. I'm going to okay. the city council now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Thank Thanks, you. Raylene. You too. I'll be in touch. All right, bye-bye. Uh, credit card policy. There is a copy in your folder. Very simply, um, we, we want to up the limit because it's driving Diane crazy <laughs> in simple terms. What's the limit current? I think the limit right now is 2,500. It's 2,500. We want to go to 5,000. What's happening is the police, uh, for the trainings, all the trainings I have to pay for online. Uh, and a lot of them is just even the academy. They, they're no longer accepting check or accepting your credit. They want to get paid immediately. And a lot of the trainings are not even in this area. So, and some of them are, um, you know, through video, but I think that's the biggest part of it. But the other thing is too, we can't find all the things that we need here, like maybe a part for a piece of equipment that's broken down or even uh, a printer. Some of the time that we can't get that at Staples, we just can't get these things in. We can get them from Amazon. So it's not like we use it every day, but there are times when that's the only source that we get it at some place where we have to have a credit card. So I, I have a question. Um, this would only be used, authorized by the town administrator or the select board, mm -hmm. right? Do you foresee um, having maybe even a smaller limit for, for your use or the town clerk if you are not in the office? Is there... Is, I'm not saying it's the, the rubber bands you need to go get, but. Yeah, I don't see that happening because people, they're coming in regardless right now. Okay. Uh, especially the police, that's the biggest piece of it. 
Uh, those are the things that could cost uh, you know five or six hundred dollars or even more, especially the chief of police because some of the stuff that he's had to take, which is mandatory, has cost thousands, and he has to take. Them. I, I, I don't think we're there yet, Joe. No. Okay. It, it may be coming down the road, um, but we're, I don't think we're there yet. Where it's it's that much of an issue where we need other people authorized to your point than what we have right now. It's, it's just more to keep track of too. Well, yeah. I know we've had to increase ours at the at the park to five thousand. We were so I'd make a motion. Uh, to increase the limit to five thousand uh, under the uh, policies that are in effect now. Is that the only change from the current? Uh, That's the only change. Yeah. yeah. I just okay. cleaned up the. I just cleaned it up a little bit and changed the amount. I second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I will need the board to. Sign off on that as well. So, can I please? Uh, CD fiber proposed optical line terminal. Yes, yeah, so there is a, a package in there uh, with an email from Karen Kotecki as well um, that talks about, uh, talks a little bit about this with what it's going to look like. The proposed location by the uh, Riverton Fire Station as well. Um, they're looking. They looked at a number of locations, basically is what she's saying in the email, uh, to bring high-speed internet um, and the CV fiber territory. The optical line terminal site consists of a concrete pad, a metal cabinet to house the electronics, a power meter, backup power, which may be an above-ground propane tank, and hand holes, which are, are underground boxes located within the easement area and is where the fiber comes into, the, comes into and leaves the site. The typical dimensions for the easements are approximately 25 by 25 feet, uh, but can be scaled back to being any type of equipment to be installed. Um, and again, you'll see the, uh, the, the, the plans, what they're talking about, and the description uh, of the cabinet, uh, the, the noise uh, in DVs. There's, there's a report on that in here as well, part of the technical specs. Uh, with regard to that. So this is the, the large parking lot near the mailboxes. Where the mailboxes the large are. parking lot with an LR. It's on that left. side to of the, the I think it's on that side of the building. Yeah. I thought it was just off the fire department footprint, but uh, I could be wrong in that. I'll have to look and, uh, and check again. What is the price proposed? Is there a price associated? No. No price. No price no. associated with this. And the benefit of this is to benefit who? The home. It's to bring high speed internet to the town, right? Oh. With, through CV fiber and the surrounding communities. It's kind of a hub that will go out from here to from Northfield. Home. and. They have been yeah. working on it for quite yeah. some time. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And this is just in conjunction with what's going on to you? Uh... So, again, just there's. Just to be clear, this is for information for the board tonight to look at and review. Um, and then I will uh, bring her in uh, to, uh, uh, she actually wants to do a site visit if the board's interested to, to walk and talk there and answer any questions as well. Um, so it's really information, this is what they wanna do. Uh, they want the board to be aware and then they're willing to come and talk, either come here or do a, or do a site visit. Excellent. So. I'm in favor of a site visit and hearing, you know, more details. That's wonderful. Yeah, because it seems like Comcast and uh, Consolidated, they've been working on getting the high-speed uh, fiber optics through, I know, at least to our area, they've been busy on there. Yeah. And this is different than the Comcast and Consolidated? I, I believe you know, so. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a third option. Yeah. All right. So if the board wants to look that over, um, I can set something up in probably March or April with her to, to come and meet and do a site visit. Okay, uh, liquor license approval. 
Uh, there's a summary sheet that I had put on the table. I think there's either three or four on there. It was just a one pager. There it is. Looks like it's that one right there. I make the motion to approve the liquor and tobacco <coughs> licenses. Um, I'll do them one at a time. For KPH Drugs Incorporated Second Class, it's a renewal, and the location is Kinney Drugs Group 302. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Any problems with the chief? Is no, no, no problems. Is that just the class two liquor? Or is it is there cigarettes? Cigarettes two. It's both. Okay. Mm -hmm. Liquor and tobacco. The any, net. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Gary? I make the approval for liquor and tobacco license for select board approval tonight for Brockton Corporation. To tobacco substitute endorsement is new. The location is Shaw's Payne Turnpike. And it's already been approved for the tobacco and the liquor licenses. Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I make the motion for the liquor and tobacco license for select board approval for Vermont CVS Pharmacy LLC. It's a second class, it's a renewal, and the location is CVS Pharmacy Route 302. Okay, second that. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-17 for payroll from January 29, 2023 to February 11, 2023, paid on February 15th of this year in the amount of $62,022.71. Also payable warrant 23G15 G with che checks 22704 to 22732 for payables in the amount of $67,996.49. Second uh, uh, Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Approval of February 6 minutes. 2023. Has any other board member been able to read that in their entire list yet? No. I haven't. Can we postpone this, Vince, to the next meeting sure. until we all have a chance to read it fully? Here, here, motion to table the minutes till next meeting. I make a motion that we table the minutes of Monday, February 6, 2023, to the next meeting, please. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And round table, Joe. I'll go. Hello? Two things. I wanted to compliment the um, staff on uh, Crosstown Road. Uh, very nice in terms of the grading that was done recently. And also, I wanted to check if you heard anything, Vince, on the status of Lover's Lane in Riverton. Nothing. Nothing yet. No. no. So no commitment in terms of the time frame. Not yet. Okay. Thank you. I will be reaching out again here very soon, it. though. Really appreciate it. Uh, Dave? No. Uh, Vince? Just a couple of things real quick. Uh, I was going to ask you about the Kapowski Grange, the open house there that's coming up. Good point. I did see that they were having an open house. Yep. I, I won't be able to attend. That was for the elevator, right? Yep. Yeah, the, that's for their elevator. And I, I, was, you, I was going to try to stop them. Okay. There. So you're prepared to say a few words? <laughs> Perfect. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> okay, thanks. Now give us yeah, yours. Just a couple of things. Chief wanted me to brief you on uh, just a, an upcoming expense. It's a, it's going to be a yearly deal. That's the benchmark software for the personnel files and tracking. It's about $5,000 uh, roughly. Um, so again, I'm just letting you know that I have not done anything yet, uh, with regards to the, uh, MOU on the, on the Beaver, uh, baffles. Um, I think, uh, the, the general feeling was, and correct me if I'm wrong at the time was kind of to let's wait and see. Um, there's nothing to say that we can't go back, uh, to this group. Um, but I think the general feeling was let's wait and see what happens with the Beavers. 
if it gets any worse, it gets better, it goes away, stays about the same uh, from Tim's perspective as well. Unless, unless the board wants me to, uh, again, ask him to come in. He'll, if we don't commit, from what I heard, though, we'll be paying for him to do uh, give us an estimate. So. I like the way, I, I mean, in the past, it, they, it's not like they've taken a lot of beaver out of there, have they, in the past? But we took two out last two. year. We trapped two. And that was on this That's end. a lot of money. That's okay. See how it goes in the spring. Okay. That, that was all I had, and uh, and then we will have an executive session tonight to uh, review a draft contract. I had one other thing, and that is if the board would think about whether anyone's available to accompany Muriel Morse with the ballots on the evening uh, election when she takes them to takes them forward. She needs one other person, um, Republican. She said, and uh, I'm not sure that I can do it. She has asked me if I could, but I'm not sure yet. So I'm just putting it out there. If there's anyone else on the board that can, okay, um, she would greatly appreciate it. I or if you know anyone else, Vince, that could. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Great. And it's possible that things will change for me and I can, but at this point, it doesn't look like I will be able to. I don't want to leave her in the lurch for too long. Okay. I don't want to. Have a good commitment. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, executive session on contract? Yes. I'd make a motion to enter executive session. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, point of order? Uh, sure, Tor. Uh, good evening. Uh, contracts actually require the premature finding of. Public disposal before you go into executive session. Correct. So, what he's saying is we have to make the statement that due to premature, uh, premature disclosure, uh, wording, yeah, exposure of that information could be detrimental uh, for to, for the town at this point in time. Go again one more time. I don't know if I can say it twice in a row. <laughs> I don't think I can either. So make, a, make a motion to go into executive session and for contract due due to premature premature information could affect the outcome of the contract. Adversely. Adversely affect the outcome. Do we hear a second? I second. All those in favor. Thanks, Tour. All right. Thank you, Tour. Right. Yeah, folks. Have a good one. Yeah, Appreciate you too, Tour. You.